Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be all about my sleeve. Now, if you guys tuned into my last vlog, my first and most recent vlog that I posted, it was all about getting this tattoo. I brought you guys along with me getting my tattoo in the midst of a pandemic. So it was kind of cool, very different the way things are in kind of like the tattoo world nowadays, all the different precautions that are needed to be taken. I mean, everything is so different in the world. Obviously being in a tattoo shop is gonna be no different. Um, I just think it's even more heightened because of the industry that it is. Tattoo shops have always been super clean and everything like that, um, but they definitely are taking it to another level making sure that everybody who comes in is not sick everybody is very clean making sure that you're sanitizing your phone and everything that you have before you're coming in not bringing anybody with you so a lot has changed in regard to actually going and getting the tattoo so that's kind of why I wanted to film a vlog and kind of let you know what it's like going to get tattooed nowadays the reason I really wanted to get tattooed, even though everything is still going on um, in the world, was because A, I just really wanted to get it finished. It's been four years since I started this tattoo. I reached out to my artist for the first time when I was still in high school. So I just really wanted to finish it so he could have like a complete picture and be done with me, honestly, after all this time. Um, and the second reason I really wanted to was because I'm moving out of state. I sound like a broken record if you guys have you know watched all my videos, but if you're new here, I am moving. Um, and I really wanted to make sure that I was finishing this up, kind of like tying up those loose ends before I move out of state and it's not going to be as accessible to be able to come back and get any work done by him. So hope that makes sense. I love watching videos like this just because I am curious to see the thought process of the person, kind of seeing where they started to kind of what their tattoo looks like now. Um, I called mine kind of like a patchwork sleeve, not because it's like the traditional patchwork style where you have a lot of, you know, singular tattoos making up a full sleeve, but that mine is kind of like four different ideas that came together to make a sleeve. Um, that's just because my idea was not cohesive at first. I didn't know what specifically I wanted right off the bat, which is why it kind of took so long to finish. Um, but I think that also helps people who might not know themselves what they want kind of see what direction they could go in for their own tattoo. Starting all the way back actually five years ago, it was 2015 when I actually started brainstorming the idea of starting my arm. At the time I already had one, two, three tattoos. I had three tattoos from like this local shop um, that I went to. I just really was super unknowledgeable about tattoos at the time and I just went to a local spot. Social media was just starting to take off and become like super prevalent at that time. And there were definitely tattoo artists with a portfolio on their Instagram that you can see, but I was not knowledgeable about that at all. I kind of just walked in and, you know, found somebody that looked pretty decent and had them do basically all my tattoos. <laughs> this is my first time though in 2015 was, you know, branching out and using social media as a platform to find artists. It's really funny too, when I think back to when I started researching artists, before I found my artist who did my full arm, um, I learned of Ryan Ashley Malarkey, who was the ink master. She's like the best person that was ever on that show, in my opinion. I found her because her ex was, when they were still dating, was in Motionless and White, who was one of my favorite bands, and I found her through him. Um, and I absolutely loved her work. I reached out to her and her studio to see if I can go and have her start my arm. Um, but I ended up not going through and setting anything up, setting up a consultation or anything like that. Um, just because Pennsylvania is like a pretty decent drive from where I was living in Connecticut and I was still in high school. Like it really just wouldn't make sense for me to do that. But I think it's so funny that I look back and I'm like, I literally could have gotten tattooed by Ryan Ashley. Um, because literally I think it was the year after, um, she was on Ink Master and she blew up obviously like crazy. She's amazingly talented. I mean, she was big back in like 2015 too. Like she had a ton of followers. I really wanted to go in and see her. Um, but yeah, no, it's impossible to probably get tattooed by her nowadays unless you have this like killer idea and you can get in. Um, but I think that's so funny. I could have gotten tattooed by Ryan Ashley. But my initial idea for her was I wanted um, roses on my... Um, shoulder and like my upper bicep and stuff like that, which is like, I feel like that's everybody's idea of like a cliche tattoo is roses. Um, but I think roses are still super pretty in tattoos. I do have a rose tattoo. I love them. Um, but I wanted roses and I wanted like draping pearls because she did really beautiful, like pearls and beads and like different types of jewelry pieces. Um, so that's what I really wanted. That's what I actually had reached out to her studio and her shop to try to set something up and I didn't end up going through with it, but I did find my artist when I found um, Ernesto Nave is his name. He's the owner at Lost Art Gallery Tattooing, um, which is in Oakville, Connecticut. Um, when I had initially reached out, I'm like 99% sure that that's the idea that I brought up to him was um, doing roses, roses and pearls. So <laughs> at that time he really didn't have 
um, the same setup that he did now. It was mostly like people would come to him and request appointments and he would book you out for the next available day that he had. So he changed it now, it's totally different. He can only book three months in advance. He only books three months at a time because it was super overwhelming for him because he's such an amazing artist. He's like very high in demand. I had to wait almost a full calendar year um, in order to see him. It was April, I remember this because I remember specifically being in high school and like sitting outside of my school. It was April, 2015, right before I was graduating and I had emailed the shop, I got my appointment time and it wasn't until March the following year. So I actually got tattooed by him in 2016. So almost a full year I waited. That's just how his system was at the time. He was in such high demand, like people would wait that long to go see him and I totally did. I wanted to wait and you know get his expertise and I'm so, so happy that it was that long of a wait because it made me reconsider what I wanted from him. And I forgot to mention, I found him because somebody I know had a tattoo by him and posted his picture. I think that's a really big way that artists get business is by like word of mouth, posting about it, um, kind of like tagging them in pictures, letting your friends know that you got a tattoo by them. Um, because that's how I found my artist, somebody I know got tattooed by him. Um, and I was super impressed. So I think that's really important why you should always support your artist, you know, flaunt them, let everybody know that you love their tattoo, get them business um, because this is their livelihood and it's super important to help them out. They're giving this amazing piece of artwork and you know, it definitely helped me out because I found this amazing artist who was able to do my entire arm. So just mentioning that, that's how I found him. So yeah, it was really awesome that it was a full calendar year that I waited because I decided I did not want the rose idea anymore. It just popped into my head that I wanted a wolf. Wolves are like super important to me. They, that was like my everything. I knew like that's my like spirit animal. If I had to have one, it would be a wolf. Like I love wolves. Um, so I'm gonna stand up and do my little showing off if I can. So this is the first tattoo that I got. And I wanted it just because I absolutely love, like I said, wolves. They became super important to me. And it's just like a really nice piece Initially, I had wanted this with the face here and the trees up here and my artist basically said no because that would look very silly and I'm, again, I'm so happy he did because listen to your artist, they know more than you do. I didn't put up a fight with it because he told me I could either put it on my forearm or up here. I didn't want to cover this area yet, so I had him put it on the forearm. But don't argue with your artists. Like they know what looks good. They know what will format properly um, and read well. So I was just like, yeah, whatever. Do it on my forum. Do whatever you gotta do to make it look good. So I'm so happy that he spoke up and said something. It's really hard to show you guys. Another thing I wanted to mention though is obviously my tattoo does not go down very far. Same here when he started it there's this huge space here. That's because, like I said, I made my appointment when I was still in high school. I had like no direction in my life. I had no idea what I wanted to do. When I started college, I actually started as an art student. <clears throat> I went to art school and I did that because I really didn't know what else I wanted to do. So I didn't want to get something that went down too far that if I needed to cover up my tattoo that I wouldn't be able to get a job. Like I just was like so confused. I had like my parents in my face upset with me about wanting a tattoo. I had myself being like confused. Do I really want to get this and have something be, you know, maybe deterring me from being able to get a job one day. Now though, I do wish that I went down farther because there is just this very awkward space here. I may go back and fill that space in with my artist one day. I've also considered getting my hand now just because I have a lot more direction of where I wanna go in my life. And I'm at a point where I kind of don't care if it would deter a job from hiring me because I wouldn't wanna work for a job that wouldn't hire me because of tattoos anyway. Um, I volunteer with support tattoos and piercings at work. I have volunteered with them since 2016, like it's a huge part of my life. Um, and I fully support tattoos in the workplace if it's not obscene, if it's not like, you know, swear words on your forehead or anything like, you know, I don't think that should make me not a candidate for a position just because I have some ink in my skin. Um, so I really don't care at this point. I think it would look really nice to have something at least a little bit come onto my hand. So that is something I'm considering right now. Um, it's not something I'm gonna jump on right away, especially because we're moving and I'm not local to my artist, but that is something, if you were wondering why when I got this tattoo, it didn't go all the way down, that's why. I just was very confused and I didn't know what I wanna do with my life. And that doesn't mean that if you don't know what you're doing with your life that you can't get the tattoos that you want. Um, you could do whatever you want and I like, you know, urge people to do whatever they want because I think it's crazy that a job will deny you just because of ink in your skin. I think it's like totally like, I don't know, it doesn't make any sense to me. Um, 
that you would judge somebody's body just as if it was a part of their resume. That's like a huge thing for stop pause. My body is not my resume. And I totally agree with that statement because I don't think your choices and artwork that you have in your body should have anything to do with the qualifications that you can bring to a position. Um, that's my opinion. If that's something that worries you, maybe hold off on getting very visible tattoos. But at the end of the day, do what you want. Don't let anybody tell you what you can and can't do with your body. So I got my wolf boy. Um, March 26, 2016, I just looked it up. It was six days after my 19th birthday. So I actually made the appointment when I was 18 and still in high school and I got it when I was 19. So that's when I got this one. After a little bit of time went by, I was continuing to think like, what do I want to add? Like I, I'm at a point where I do wanna add to my arm. I do wanna make it a full sleeve. But what really held me back, not only was like finances, you know, tattoos are an investment. I didn't really have the money at the time. I was a broke college student, you know. There was one time my mom texted me and she was like, do you know you have 14 cents in your bank account? And I was like, yep. Sounds about right. Um, but I was really not having that much money. I wasn't working at the time, so I really couldn't afford to get any more work. Plus, I didn't really know what I wanted. Um, I didn't have any ideas. So I think it was like a full, maybe like a year and a half before I got my next piece, which was the back of my arm. I wanted to work up, so it made a little bit more sense. It was kind of like a half. And then it went up. I know most people say if you're going to work on a tattoo sleeve, you should start from the top down because it makes more sense that way. I don't think it really matters. Do whatever you want. Like I started bottom up. It is a girl walking through a gate into a forest. And my mom like always insists that it's a cemetery for some reason because apparently you don't see gates anywhere besides a cemetery. It's not a cemetery. It's just into the woods um, and she's holding a lantern. I don't know really where this idea came from. It kind of just like popped into my head and the thought of the imagery made sense and I thought it would look really cool. Um, the deer skull, I actually didn't come up with that, that idea. My artist, when he showed me the drawing that he made on the day of my tattoo, he just kind of added that in to create some foreground to it. And I loved it. It literally looks so good. It like tied everything together. It made sense. It fit like the vibe that I wanted from it and it totally just like worked and I was super excited about it. Um, I mentioned in my other video um, when I was doing my vlog, this had to be done in two sessions because when I was in college, I had to take a bus to get to my car, which sounds so silly. Like my campus was pretty big. So I had to park pretty far um, to a lot on campus because it was the cheapest lot that I can buy a pass for. So I had to take a bus to get to my car. There's like these huge problems that I would have with the bus system at my school like sometimes the app wouldn't be very reliable and it said that a bus was coming and I was standing there standing there waiting and the bus apparently had already left and I was literally sitting there and the bus wasn't going to come for another 20 minutes. So I needed to stop back at my dorm. I ran back to my dorm, grabbed what I needed, ran all the way back to the bus stop because the next bus should be there. That's what they said. What do you know? The app screwed me up again and I missed the bus apparently again. So I'm sitting here panicking, like worrying about being late because I'm never late for anything, anything. I hate being late in life. It makes me so anxious. I want to respect other people's time. So I was just getting really stressed out because it was a good hour and a half probably drive all the way home, probably an hour, an hour and a half especially because it was rush hour traffic too. Like everything was like stacked against me at this point. The bus finally came. I finally got to my car. Of course I hit traffic driving through the capital city. It was just like a mess. I was like an hour late to my appointment or something like that. I felt so, so terrible. Um, my artist didn't really mind. I, at least he didn't show it. I know he probably was a little pissed off that he wasn't going to be able to finish it. Um, and I totally feel so bad about that. Like it makes me so upset when I think about being late to things, but he did have to do this in two sessions. I will upload pictures because I have pictures from um, the first session and once I finished it. I did go in to get that finished pretty quickly um, because I mean, it's not the best walking around with an unfinished tattoo. You just really wanna see it finished and see it in its glory. Um, but yeah, I did have to do that one in two sessions, which bummed me out a ton, but that is that part there. Just so you can see how it fits together. It is hard going around back here. I'll show you. There is like trees that go this way and trees that go this way. It is really hard on an area that's like cylindrical <laughs> to make it make sense and be straight up and down all the way around. But I think he did a really amazing job pulling it all together. For this one, he did use a stencil and he used a photo reference of a wolf. 
This one back here, he used his drawing as like a stencil, um, but these um, trees that he did around are all freehanded. He just drew it in with the Sharpie. This one here I got September 8th, 2017. So it was over a year after I got this one. Sorry, this one's a really hard one to show on camera. The third session that I got was my bird here. So initially when I got the idea of what I wanted, I really wanted like a raven or a crow. Just, I really wanted a black bird. I just think they look really nice. Um, and I brought that idea to him and I really wanted it to be holding a skeleton key. Um, I literally Googled um, like crow holding skeleton key or something. <laughs> and this image popped up and it really sparked his you know, ideas, coming up with things that would really be fitting for the area on my arm that I wanted it. And he made a drawing which he then put on my skin. So this one used some of the like stencil, but also some of his own freehand drawing, making things work. I feel like that's a huge thing for artists is when they have to go in and draw themselves to make it fit on your anatomy. Like that's really important. So it looks not just like a stencil, but it really fits your area. And this is really important for any type of like, I don't know what I would consider this kind of like it's like realism but like illustrative realism so you can tell it's a drawing of a bird but it looks kind of realistic if that makes sense it's not like photorealism but um it's more illustrative so I'll show you this one so here is my bird there is still a couple raised areas anytime I get tattooed my skin is like super sensitive and it stays a little raised um, but it is completely healed now from my last session he did go over this a little bit I'll put in a picture of what it looks like beforehand before he went in in the background because this is all added in my last session but just what was here was the bird itself um, and he is holding like I said a skeleton key it comes down from his beak and it fills in this little area here um, and there are some leaves that go up. Those leaves were from the third session that I got when I did this one here. He did leaves going up that way. And the bird itself with some of these um, branches here. It's kind of hard to show like what specifically was the area that he did just because it now is incorporating the last session that I got, but I will post a picture now showing what it looked like before all of this was added. Um, it was just the bird with a little bit of the branch and some branches on top. It wasn't as full as it is now. So with my arm down, that is what it looks like. Now my bird, I got November 4th, 2019. So again, another full year from when I was working on this one here. Again, it came down to not having money, A, and B, literally not knowing what I wanted. It took me a long time to figure it out. And I feel like that it's the case for some people. Like some people know exactly what they want. They have a vision of their whole entire arm, how they want it to look, and they're able to work on it a lot faster, um, which is really helpful for the artist so they can post that, you know, finished work. Um, but unfortunately, that's not how it worked for me. I literally did not know what I wanted. It wasn't at like the top of my priority list either. Like, you know, it's something that I would like to work on, but I want to have an idea that came to me that was really special and that I really knew that I would want in that spot for the rest of my life. You know what I mean? Like, I don't take decisions like that lightly. I can't just come up with an idea and go and get it the same day because the last time that I did that was a terrible idea. It's the worst tattoo I have and I want to get it covered up. So I do take a lot of time to come up with the ideas that I have, really envision it in myself, come up with reference images that I could send to my artist. Um, with this one, like I said, he just had the drawing completed based off of the references, reference images that I sent him, but also just like based off of his own mind. He's an amazing artist, so I trust him 100% in coming up with an amazing piece. So again, this was 2019 that I got this one and I finally moved on to finish my arm in two more sessions and I'll get into that now. So as far as the inside of this arm goes, it was a really difficult spot because let me stand up so you can see it literally is in a place where, you know, this down here is the foreground. This is the foreground. This is the tree. So what am I going to put in here? Am I going to do another bird? Am I going to put something else? Like I really just had no idea what I wanted to put there. And when I made the appointment, this one was on 
July 8th, 2020. So this was once they reopened after COVID. Um, I basically went in and I said, I don't care what you put here because my brain cannot fit anything in that spot. So whatever you think will look good, I'm 100% open to hearing what you think would look good there. So the way my artist works is he has a day where his books will be open. Um, at noon when the shop opens, you can call and put a callback number in so you can schedule your appointment. It's kind of first come, first serve at that point. Um, so you gotta kind of fight for your spot. So I called, usually you have to have had a consultation with them before in order to secure your spot. But I kind of just mentioned the situation. I kind of said, well, should I come in and see him? I really just don't have any idea of what I want. I just want it finished any way that he sees fit. And they said, nope, it's fine. You can just, you know, make an appointment and come in that the day of basically is what they said which kind of surprised me. I was like, that would just like make me so anxious if somebody was coming in and I don't really know what I'm working with. I mean, obviously I sent pictures of my arm, sent pictures of the space, um, where it was gonna go and stuff like that in case he wanted to, you know, get some ideas going. Um, but that was it. I went in the day of, and the second I walked in through the door, he was like, so what are we doing today? And I thought that was just so funny. Um, he's so talented where he can do something like that. So essentially he was just drawing on my skin here. Initially he had asked if maybe I was interested in like a face in the bark. Um, and he pulled up some pictures and I really like, that wasn't really my style. And then he just said that maybe he would do some really cool like leaves and like trees and stuff like that and I was like yeah that sounds perfect whatever you think will look good just the bark thing with the face wasn't like super down my alley so he got started drawing I'll do a quick close-up so you can see back here are some like almost like negative space leaves which are super pretty he extended this like branch down and there are some trees in the back along with another one of these little leaves that ties in to these leaves here people said the ditch is like the worst place to get tattooed um, and i really didn't find it to be that bad compared to like other places i think the inside here was really really not nice um, and then anywhere near my elbow was just absolutely horrifying i absolutely hated that i'm so happy he didn't even touch like the tip of it <laughs> but just getting around it like oh my gosh that was so much worse than the ditch for me personally i was super happy with what he was able to produce you know given that i was basically useless i gave him like no information of what i wanted besides you know just make it look like it's cohesive um so again i'm probably like a nightmare client when it comes to this i definitely would not go about you know my arm this way knowing what i know now about tattoos and you know wanting to plan things out a little bit better um, but he was so amazing about it he was so helpful um, made the process so easy for me and just really was able to you know, take the little bits of what I said I wanted and just like make it into what it is now. And it's so amazing. It looks so cohesive. And I'm just so impressed with that ability that he has to be able to create, you know, something out of, I was giving him nothing. So the last session we did was the one that I filmed in my vlog and it was just filling in what was left. So I'll do a close up for you guys now. He added a ton of more shading for trees, like in the background, a lot more um, branches up top with some leaves. The back actually has the tree that the branch is coming from, which is a really amazing way that he tied this in. So yeah, that's kind of how it looks now that it's all healed. And this final piece, like I said, the finishing up of it was September 22nd. That is when I finally finished it. So there was less time in between um, this one and this one, just so I can get it done before we move. Again, with this last session, I mentioned it in my vlog, but I kind of just let him do whatever to fill in the space, whatever would fit well, whatever his mind saw looking and flowing well, um, because my mind doesn't work that way. Um, I had to go and kind of pick his brain, see if he knew what would go there. And again, he just literally freehand drew on me with Sharpies, which blows me away. He used no reference material. He didn't look at like um, bark textures or anything like he, in his mind he just knew what to do he drew it on me and then tattooed it so um, I think that's super amazing and he did a fantastic job I'm so obsessed with my arm I'm so excited to make this video because I feel like it'll help people um, if you are as scatterbrained as I am when it comes to coming up with that tattoo idea maybe this will help you in kind of piecing things together picking an artist who can kind of work with you if you don't exactly have this image in your mind of what exactly you want it to look like 
when I am going to move on to larger projects, like right now I want to do my back, I will not be doing it like this. I don't think I'll ever do another tattoo in this manner just because not only is it a super lengthy process if you don't know what you want, but also I can feel it will be a little frustrating for the artist to kind of have these stop and go, a lot of time in between sessions, and then kind of having to connect the dots and make everything flow together if there's so many different separate ideas. So I think once I do go on and now that I know a lot more about tattooing and the industry and have like so much respect for it, I definitely wanna make sure that I'm coming to my appointment and I have an idea of what I want and a cohesive you know idea and vision and be able to work with them in order to get there in a timely manner if that makes sense so that is all about my tattoo sleeve again I might go down on my hand eventually I'm not really sure about that one yet anytime I do do that though I will let you guys know um, if that's a decision that I'm gonna make for right now though I'm just happy that it's done like I said it took four years four years for me to start and finish my tattoo. Um, I'm in love with it though. It really is something that I'm super proud of and I'm proud to wear it. My tattoo artist is amazing. He does fantastic work. It's kind of like, like this is my arm, but like this is his work. This is his vision. And he really just like brought my ideas to life. So I'm so happy to wear this. This is an Ernesto Nave um, masterpiece. If you wanna check him out, I'll leave his like Instagram and stuff down below as well as like the link for his um, studio. Everybody who works there is really amazing. All the artists are like fantastic. Um, but yeah, that's everything about my arm. I can't wait to go on to my back and I'll definitely make a video about that once I do get around to it. But um, I'm not sure who I'm going to go to, by the way. I do love my artist and I feel like I could stay with him for literally everything else that I do. But a part of me wants to like branch out and see what other artists there are out there just because I really like the idea of being a tattoo collector and like collecting artwork from different artists. I think that's like a really awesome concept. And I see a lot of amazing work on others who go about it that way, just kind of collect tattoos from artists that they really admire. So I kind of want to look into maybe doing that, having somebody do my back, somebody different do my back. Um, but who knows, maybe I will go back to Ernesto again. He is really amazing. Um, and I know I can count on his work 110% being phenomenal. So we'll just see. I'm not really sure what direction I'm going to go yet. i uh, got to wait till I have like a really solid idea before I even start. So you guys will know when I do come up with that. But until then, I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye.